السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل لا ومن يضلل فلا هادي لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد So today we move on to the next question or topic regarding the methodology from the book الأجوبة المفيدة and أسئلة المناهج الجديدة Questions and topics posed to the great scholar الشيخ الألامة صالح بن فوزان بن عبد الله الفوزان حفظه الله تعالى These questions were posed to, posed to him over 25 years ago yet each of them is relevant today because it is rooted in the usul in the foundations and the principles that you will find in the books of Aqeedah and Salafiyyah of the early Salaf. So the question that is posed to him is do you hold it permissible that newspapers and magazines should be read in the Masajid in order to highlight and forbid the evil that is found in them and to explain to the people in order to warn them, meaning to warn them from the harms and the evils that are contained within these, these suhuf and these mujallat, in these pages and in these magazines and newspapers and so on. So he answered the question. And before I... And let me just preface that, Barakallahu Feekum, with the fact that this is something that actually, even though it is alien to our masajid and our mosques and the masajid of Salafiyyah and Sunnah, nevertheless it is something that is widespread and especially in the 90s and right up until the 2000s and even in some places right till this day where people use the manabir, the members on Yomul Jumu'ah, and their masajid where they organize conferences and lectures and seminars and durus on a weekly basis, and they use it to highlight to the people what they refer to as the current affairs. So they will read these newspaper articles, and they will mention some of the sins and some of the various affairs that are mentioned within them, and then they will proceed to mention the name of this one and the name of that one and the characteristics of, of, of what, 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 or, the, or the affairs that are taking place in society. So this is why I preface the answer with that so that you are aware that, I know in the minds of some of you thinking, do people actually do that? Yes, people do do that. And they will read those or they will memorize them or they will read them to the people. And then the whole of the dars is about the newspaper or the magazine or what's happening on social media or news media. So Sheikh Al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he answered the question by saying that newspapers and magazines should not be gathered together and read in front of gatherings of people. Rather, what is within them, meaning whatever is within them of evil and wrongdoing, that if it is to be gathered, then it, is, then it should be gathered and investigated in front of the people of knowledge, the scholars, and those who have authority and who are able to solve the problems, to ease the difficulties in society, meaning that they have some sort of manzila, some position in society so they can resolve those issues that are found in those magazines, meaning the, you know, what they report. As for talking about them in the masajid or to the people in the masajid in the, in the, in the mosques then 
this is not done in, except in order to spread evil and not to forbid it. And this may be a reason for people becoming pleased with sin and wrongdoing and wickedness because we find that many of the people and some of the people rather that they get happy indeed they become excited when they see these accusations and claims being spread and discussed and perhaps we may find that some of the munafiqeen some of the hypocrites that they may infiltrate so some of the hypocrites they may infiltrate the ranks of the people wanting to spread evil and falsehood so this affair is very dangerous indeed and it is not the path of remedying the problems by Allah this is not the way to fix problems and to resolve them the one who wishes to advise the Muslims and the rulers of the Muslims and the general Muslims let him not take this path. Let him not take the path meaning of bringing those magazines or those social media articles or, those, or that news and, the, and, and those newspapers into the masajid in front of the general Muslims. This is not the path, i.e. gathering these errors in the masjid and then announcing them and spreading them because this is to proceed upon falsehood and upon batil. And the people will say, because if you read some of that which is reported, and he's obviously referring, Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, is referring, referring to the Muslim countries, where there is some restraint within the magazines and there is some control in media, where the rulers, rightfully, that they control that which can be reported and that which that cannot be reported, but sometimes the affair is open. So then you find that Many of these newspapers and news media, they start talking about things that are haram. So even though there is some re restraint that we find in the lands of Islam, there is still something that you will notice by way of the proliferation of, the, of gossip and news regarding what is taking place in those societies, whether it be in terms of music or movies or even the current affairs. And much of it is in opposition to the Kitab and the Sunnah, as we know. Then when you consider our lands, where we are living, Wallahul Musta'an, in the lands of Kufr, and in Darul Kufr, or in the, in the rest of the lands other than the land that we live in, you find that there is a huge amount of openness in terms of what can be reported. So they may attack the Muslims, and they may attack the Muslim countries. And the, the Aqidah of the Muslims and the morals of the Muslims, and they themselves, that they engage in speech that is of absolutely no benefit, except that they are just trying to spread all types of lewdness and immorality and sins and misguidance. So, going back to the speech of Sheikh Al-Fawzan, he said the people will say, well, if the affair is like that, and this is the way of doing things, then the matter is open, and anyone can do what he wants, meaning that in essence, my brothers and sisters, that by reading this kind of material in front of the people, that you're actually teaching them. This is what can be done. And you know, those people who get excitable and people who like this kind of, you know, that they are attracted because shaitan has, you know, shaitan is whispering to them or beautifies for them that which is sinful and harmful to their souls, that they will look at this and may even take it as an example. So there are people who will say that. So Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, and that is because there are many people who do not know about these affairs. So by doing this, you are opening doors for them. Telling them about these things that they were previously unaware of. And was of no benefit to them. And this is on top of all of the other types of corruption, of course, that, that the people have to encounter. So this, and that's the end of, of his answer on this point. However, there is another issue that, that actually adjoins this issue or comes alongside this issue. And that is that when you start, you know, the first, the, the first thing that we'll mention is the fact that when these magazines and this news media is brought into the masajid, 
You'll find that upon these magazines and these newspapers or articles, or even if you bring it onto your phones and you display it in front of the people, that this involves the usage of imagery and pictures. So the author or the compiler, Sheikh Jamal, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that he mentions that Sheikh Muhammad, and this is the former Mufti of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Al Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim, Mufti, the former Mufti of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, even before Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz. He was the Mufti before Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz. So he said, as for the ruling on using pictures, then the scholars have made it clear that it is haram to use images of creatures that have a soul, whether inside or outside of the masjid, meaning that it is haram to use imagery and to, to have this imagery with you. It is haram. However, he said, it is not hidden from anyone that belittling the sacred places of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using pictures, for example, in the house of Allah is even more forbidden and a greater crime. Using these images and carrying them during the prayer is a great, even greater audacity. Meaning that imagery as a whole is something that is Haram, the Sharia forbids it, whether it be photography, whether it be magazines or whether it be newspapers, the Sharia in its origin forbids all of that. It does not allow it. All right. It doesn't allow it. And that is outside the masjid. As for bringing these images into the masjid, because this is a house from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered, where the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recited where the people are making sajda and ruku' and qiyam. The whole of the masjid is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore bringing images into these places is an even greater crime. So therefore that's from one aspect. As for the affair of involving oneself in current issues and current affairs and bringing these articles and magazines into the masjid so that now a person sits in front of the people and he said, well, let's just go through the papers today and see what is happening in this country or that country or what's happening with this ruler or that ruler, what's happening with this fasiq or that sinner and that transgressor or this, you know, film actor and so on. Then that, in his heart, what he thinks or what he believes, even though it is misguidance and falsehood, he thinks now that he's highlighting to the people affairs that will keep them engaged and allow them to understand the evil and corruption in society. So Sheikh Al-Fawzan, he mentioned very early on in that question, if you recall, that he said that, yes, these magazines and newspapers and, and news media may have those things which are from the Munkarat or from that which is despicable and that which is haram and forbidden. But however, the gathering of that for the purpose of highlighting the mistakes and researching what's taking place in society, that is for the scholars, meaning that even if it comes to you, that you are a person that, you know, the newspaper has come to you or that you've read this media article, then it is upon you not to now take it yourself and, and display it in front of the people, but rather take it back to the scholars or take it back to the tulab al-ilm, mutamakkineen, those who are grounded in knowledge and ilm. This is how it should be done. And let them decide what is to be done with it. So therefore, Sheikh Jamal al-Harithi, he mentions that, paraphrased, that rather this affair, meaning the reading of newspapers to the people, that it only turns the hearts of the people against the rulers, meaning that obviously in the context of the Muslim country, or even in these countries, where there is much that is mentioned about what is taking place, with regard to the rulers and those in authority in the Muslim lands. That this may turn the people against the rulers because they are seeing, and especially in the West, because of course there's a lot more leeway in the West to report what they wish to report in terms of attacking and, and highlighting the mistakes and the errors and the sins of the rulers. 
So you find that in Western media, a lot of the time, in the news media, that they look towards the Muslim countries and they start talking about the kings and the presidents and the, and the umara of the Muslim countries. And they start talking about their despotism or their tyranny and their oppression or their sins. So when a person, especially sitting in the West, reads that, and even if they are living in the Muslim countries, because now social media or news media is accessible to everyone, all they have to do is click in a few websites and they've got you know, the corrupt Western media telling them about the ills and the evils of their own society. So sometimes you find that the Muslims who are living in the Muslim countries, that the sins of their rulers are being highlighted to them through Western news media, not through the media in their own countries. So they abandon the media in their own countries, which may be corrupt in the first place in terms of the evil that they talk about in terms of movies and music and so on and so forth and what they refer to as culture. That now when they turn to the Western media, because a lot of the Western media, like such as the BBC and you know, uh, uh, the European governments who are, are running these media organizations, because the BBC is a, is a wing of the British government, and likewise France and Germany and uh, the US have their own you know, media that is, that is in essence a wing of, the, of, the, of those in authority and the government itself, that you find that, that when they spread their news, what they call news, you know, between quotation marks, that they'll translate it. Like, for example, you'll have BBC Farsi in Persia, in the Persian language. They'll have BBC in Arabic. They'll have BBC in the African countries. They'll have BBC in Urdu. They'll have BBC in Hindi. And the Americans do the same, and the French and the Germans and so on, they do the same. Why? Because the media has, is a propaganda machine. They need to spread what they have into those countries. So if they want to change the minds of the people, for example, in Egypt, then they will spread their ideas and their thoughts in the Arabic language that is directed towards the Egyptians. And this will be, for example, such and such a station operating in Egypt for the Egyptian people or for the Middle East as a whole or for India, or for Pakistan, or in the Farsi language, or in some of the languages of the other countries, such as China and elsewhere. So the whole idea of these individuals spreading their news into those countries, that a person should be very, very cautious. Because if you take that now and take it as this is the facts that are on the ground, because they are reporting about our country that we don't know about our country, then you have to ask yourself the question, what, what do they get out of this? Except to destabilize the Muslim countries. And that's just from the aspect of Islam. So you find that a lot of the time Western media, when it enters into, the, into foreign lands, meaning foreign to their, their own country where the, where, the, where the news organization is based, that there is a huge amount of propaganda that takes place. Like, for example, when Western media translates their material into the languages of Africa, that there's a huge emphasis upon the LGBT movement, for example, and propagating homosexuality and homosexual behavior. And likewise in India, and likewise in Pakistan, and likewise in many other countries where these Western ideas, in which in essence they are Western ideas, that they find them alien. But over a period of time, that they glorify them and they put them into the, all these rainbow colors and make it look as if it's something that is, you know, innocent and something that is friendly and nice and it's all about being tolerant. So at the same time that they're promoting homosexual behavior, they're also promoting alongside, alongside that, you know, an anti-racist message to bring them together, to, to make it seem that, look, we are the same people who will protect the climate and will protect the rights of minorities and will protect, you know, we are against racism and, and at the same time we are, uh, or they are, people who promote homosexual behavior. So all of this is taking place. Now, alongside this, they'll start highlighting the faults of the Muslim rulers about the corruption in such and such a country, in country X, Y, and Z. The corruption in the Middle East or the corruption in North Africa or the corruption in Africa or the corruption in the Indian subcontinent in those Muslim countries. Because the purpose is not to just send one message, but to send a rounded message. So therefore, after a period of time, the Muslims in those countries, just like Muslims here, 
who have been indoctrinated and brainwashed into thinking that whatever they see on news media is, you know, it is the absolute truth because it must have been researched and, 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 and you know, there's some sort of in, in investigating journalists or some investigative journalists who are out there really uncovering the true stories. So people start relying upon that as if this is the haqq. And therefore, the whole of their life just revolves around that. Now you ask yourself, okay, I've just spoken to you for about four or five minutes on that. Where is the Qur'an and the Hadith and the Aqeedah and the Fiqh of the Deen and the Ibadah of Allah in all of this? Nowhere. Because all of their activities revolve around these types of affairs. And they'll say, oh, look at the immorality of you know, such and such a royal family. Whether it's home or whether it's abroad, they don't, you know, they don't, a lot of the time they don't really distinguish even though they save their real hatred and their real venom for those who are outside of their own country. And that is only on the, on the, on the grounds of nationalism and, and patriotism for their own nation. So it's easier to point fingers at the faults of those who are foreign to your country. So if you are outside of Europe or outside of Britain, outside of France, outside of America, then you're more likely to be a target. Because pointing outwards is easier than looking at the ills of your own society. That's easier. Oh, look at the corruption in those undemocratic and unrepresentative, um, unrepresentative countries. So that's common amongst them. So therefore, the first thing you have to do, to be honest with you, is that whatever you read in the media, take it. As, I mean, it's not a term that we use because we don't believe in evil omens. But they would say, take it with a pinch of salt. All right? Meaning, ignore it. Don't take it for granted. You know, don't take it for granted that what they're telling you is the truth. Because a lot of the time it isn't. It's propaganda. It's propaganda on the, on the basis or from those who are spreading their idea and their ideology. It's very rare to find news that you can call neutral and honest. So therefore, what does the Muslim do? The Salafi, the person of Sunnah. What he does is that when these types of affairs come up, current affairs and what's happening in the world, that he takes it back to those who know. From the scholars, from the ulama, and from the students of knowledge. From the students of knowledge who have been watching and have seen, and the scholars who have been watching and have seen what is taking place over the last half a century or a century or more. Those who are grounded in the knowledge of Islamic history because they, books, they read the books of tarikh. What Ibn Kathir has compiled, or Imam al Dhahbi has compiled, or Khatib al Baghdadi has compiled, or what the early Salaf spoke about in understanding the Umur in light of the Kitab, because they are the ones, the ulama, and their students from the students of knowledge. But if a person now, and all of this, remember, in the context of not, still not sitting in the masjid and opening up the newspapers and saying, look, people, look what this footballer did today, or what that ruler did yesterday, or so, so on and so forth. This is not the way that we understand the current affairs. And this is why we see that when a person gets engr engrossed in these types of current affairs, a great amount of evil and corruption can result from it. Chaos and political instability, which has occurred in the Muslim countries thanks to Western media. And then local media that is in those countries that is actually trying to copy and mimic and parrot what the West do. So they see the West becoming, you know, more and more sexualized in their media news. You know, based in music and movies and nakedness and so on. So they think that the cool thing to do is to copy what they do in America, what they do in Canada, or what they do in Sweden, or what they do in Britain. So you find that the local media in Muslim countries, that they start developing the same type of thing, like basically... How do we make ourselves popular? How do you make yourselves popular? By looking at who is making adultery with whom. And who is fornicating with whom. This is how they do it. And what the rulers are wearing and what their fashion trends are. The wife of such and such a ruler or the wife of such and such an emir or the wife of such and such a prince or a western president and prime minister. And this is how they excite the people. You know, and recently, just over the last few weeks, same thing. People are engrossed with two sinners, fornicators, adulteresses, or adulterer, self-confessed, who are fighting it out in court, and everyone is glued to the screen. And this is what they keep the people busy with. So as 
people who have understanding of the kitab and the sunnah, we know what is important and what is trivial. What is put out to the people just to entertain them so they forget the real things that they should be concentrating upon. Your family, your children, your education, your children's education, the tarbiya islamiyah, their morality. What are they going to learn from these things that they see in the news media? What are they going to learn? Are they going to learn to be better people? To have a better character, Muslim or non-Muslim, regardless. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that the best of you in Islam are the best of you in Jahiliyyah. Meaning that there were people who had goodness with them in Jahiliyyah. Like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. He was good as a person. First of all, he did not worship idols, nor did he drink. Just as the Messenger of Allah ﷺ never worshipped an idol and nor did he drink. This was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. So the best of you in Islam are the best of you in Jahiliyyah so long as you have understanding of the religion. That's why Abu Bakr was the best of the people because he was the best of the people in Jahiliyyah. The bravery and courage and goodness and, and uprightness and kindness and generosity. Even a non-Muslim can have some of that. But when you enter into the affairs of news media today as it has been developing over the last half a century or so that you find that the good manners and the morality that was even found amongst the kuffar has been eroded away. It doesn't exist anymore. That's why you find that they'll say, you know, a mother will say, well, you know, my, my son doesn't call me uh, mum, just calls me Sharon. Because, you know, I, this is, because to them that's normal. That's how you erode and you think, well, is that a major thing? Well, you may not think so individually. But, you know, where are you going today? Well, I'm going to visit Sharon. Who's Sharon? Sharon's my mom. This is how they are. That's just, and you know, when you, when you think about the erosion, I mean, that's just, you know, the, the most basic of examples because, you know, it begins with simple things like that. And then the, then the bad example, uh, you know, mom and dad aren't married. Who's your dad? I don't know, actually, because she's had multiple partners because that's how they live their lives. Now, imagine... That is what has been reported in news media. That's what the children are being raised upon. The teachers that are, that are teaching the children at schools in, in, in the Western world predominantly, you know, especially in Europe and parts of North America and especially in places like Canada and Sweden and so forth, that the teacher, you know, she may be a female and she has, you know, she has a partner who's a, who's a female. Homosexual relationships. Or that the that the teacher doesn't ha is not married. You know, because that's how they live their lives. And that has an effect, it has a knock-on effect. And this is, you know, the constant diet that is digested by the reader on a daily basis in news media. And to say that this does not have an effect upon character and morality and behavior and manners... Anyone who says that has no knowledge of how propaganda, indoctrination and brainwashing and changing societies and changing attitudes work. How do you change attitudes in society except through news media? That's why any government, the first thing that any government will do is try to control the media. Sometimes for good reasons, because they don't want corruption amongst their people. And sometimes for bad reasons, because they only want their message to come out. So you find that Western news media, such as the BBC that operates in other countries, it is very, very, you know, severe in its propaganda. You know, it is really insidious in terms of what it, dis what it portrays as as the reality and the truth in terms of, you know, homosexual relationships or fornication or adultery or, you know, other affairs like this. So therefore, when we bring these types of news media into the masajid and we read it to the people, and then we start talking about this ruler and that ruler and that, it's not just a matter of instability from the direction of the khawarij, which, which is what happened during, this, during the Arab Spring over 10 years ago in Tunisia and Egypt and then across North Africa and then it spread into the Gulf countries and then down into Yemen. 
All of that was a product of news media spreading propaganda. You know, how, how, why, would the people of, why would the people of Yemen revolt in the same way as the people of Egypt? Because they took that as an example because news media was spreading the idea that this is the time to rise. And who controls the news media? Where was it spread? Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. What, those are organizations based in Muslim countries? This is from the West, trying to spread their ideas and their ideology and their doctrines into the Middle East and into the Muslim countries such that some of those wars have still not come to an end. Hundreds and thousands have died because of that. And how was it spread? Social media. And a person may think, well, it's harmless. It's not actually harmless at all. It is dangerous. It leads to bloodshed and killing and death of children and destruction of societies as what happened in Syria and Yemen and Egypt and Tunisia and Syria and elsewhere. Because this is the danger of taking the news media and believing that it is true without reference back to Ahl al-Ilm. It's not that we say, as the Sheikh himself said, we don't say that it is to be ignored, you know what they're saying, because there needs to be a response. But it must be by ruju ila ahli al-ilm, by returning back to the scholars. So, in, so the chaos and political instability that results from this instigation and incitement is something that is well known. So what is the principle here? The principle here is that preventing evil takes precedence over bringing about good. Meaning that some of the people, they think, well, if I start talking about social media or news media and about the current affairs as they are reported in the newspapers, whether it be you know, the, the, the tabloid press or the broadsheets or whatever else, that I'm now going to start mentioning this in the masjid, in front of the people, and just go through the important five stories of the day that his intention is what? To bring about something good. But the evil that results from that is even greater. So the, this principle of preventing evil takes precedence over bringing about good is extremely important. And here, the question that should be asked even before we enter into that principle is, is there any good in it in the first place? What's the good? in sitting in front of the people and all you do is from morning till evening just talk about current affairs. Leave that to those who know. And then when those who know, they will interpret it for you in light of the kitab and the sunnah. So when the rulers are mentioned, then they will say, we don't enter into the affair of the rulers. When things such as politics and sexual affairs are mentioned, then they will tell you how to curtail it and how to refute it. Which brings us to the next question. And that is question number 22. If there are errors that we find in the news media, question to Sheikh Al-Fawzan, if there are errors we find in the news media, should we not refute it and clarify those errors to the people? And Sheikh Al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned, remember, again, every time you hear these answers, these are over 25 years old. And you see the relevance of them today, which shows the insight of Ahlul Ilm and the Ulama. The errors he said present in the news, meaning in the news media and those newspapers, even errors we see in individuals, then their remedy is not done in the masajid, nor upon the manabir, nor upon nor from the pulpits. However, if one was to say in the masjid or in the khutbah what is wrong with the people that they do such and such without mentioning them by name just as the Prophet ﷺ would do then that is fine because there is benefit without harm. So the context of this this sentence or this answer of Sheikh Al-Fawzan before, before we move on to the rest of his answer is that Yes, you will see 
false reporting in newspapers against Muslims, against the rulers, or things that are said about Islam. Then, focusing upon that requires that you don't now bring those newspapers or those ideas into the masjid and then you just start repeating what is being said from the member or in the dars. However, if a person, meaning the one who, is, who has some knowledge, he is a scholar or he's a student of knowledge who has understanding and known to have understanding, so he stands upon the member and he says, for example, look at, what hap look at what is taking place in society. That what is wrong with them, that they do such and such and such and such. Or that they say, look how they're, you know, becoming drunk. Or that they're drowned in sins, what is wrong with them. Or that they say, even if it is related, for example, to an important figure, may even be a ruler then rather than mentioning him and therefore cause destabilization or incitement and instigation against the ruler, that rather it should be mentioned that this sin is something that is forbidden. And what is wrong with the people that they engage in these crimes or in these acts of disobedience? Because if he was to do that, as Sheikh al mentions, then that is fine because there is benefit in that and there is not any harm in that. Then he continues, and if there are errors found in the news media, then write a refutation against that and send it to the newspaper. And if they don't spread your response, then send it to another paper. And through this, the evil can be remedied. As for you gathering the newspapers and taking them to the masjid or to the khutbah, and then to read them, to read them from the mimbar, then this is to teach the people the parts of evil and to spread wickedness and to make famous the sinners. Why? Because when you start doing that, what are the people going to do? Well, if the imams reading those newspapers, we'll go home and read some more. Because that's what happens. So the best way is the way of Rasulullah When he saw some of the people making a mistake, then he would say, that what is wrong with the people? يَفْعَلُونَ كَذَا وَكَذَا That they do such and such and such and such. So there is no harm in mentioning the ills in society from the mudarris, from the khatib, and then to mention the people that look what they're doing in society, look what's, what's wrong with them. Be careful of that, that you don't fall into that. Or your children are not ensnared by those ideas and those, those modes of conduct or that type of fashion. And this is often done by the wise callers, by the du'at who have wisdom with them. That, they, that the intent of those du'at who have studied under the, under the scholars and they read the works of the scholars, that they are those who are well read in the writings of the likes of Sheikh Ibn Baz or Ibn Uthaymeen or Al-Albani or Muqbil and other than them from the ulama. That they realize that, there's, that when you look at the writings of those scholars, that there is a huge amount of guidance. That yes, they recognize the ills in society, and Sheikh bin Baz would mention it. Al Albani would mention it. Bin Baz would mention it. Ibn Thaymeen would mention it. Muqbil would mention it. But they would mention it in a manner that they would provide a remedy to the people and say, look, be careful. Because these, this is the method that they're using, or this is the step by step method. They use to draw you in and draw your children in. Where does it begin? And they will mention to you how it begins. And this is because they are aware of what is in the news media. But that's not for everyone. Because you find that many of the people who start reading the newspaper, they just get engrossed in that. They don't know anything about the kitab, nothing about the sunnah, nothing about the aqidah, nothing about the methodology. And they start slipping up. And they find that more exciting. Because it is exciting. In the minds of some, reading about reading about the private reading about the private lives of sports personalities and actors and actresses and so on, because to them that's exciting. Maybe their lives are boring, so they find excitement in someone else's life. It's almost like a fantasy world that they can move into when they read these articles and and cuttings and when they when they're following them on on YouTube, because their lives they see them as, you know, mundane. 
So then they have to look into the lives of others because they fight and they find in that excitement. And when a person becomes addicted to that, then all they do is, that's all they're engaged in. That's the last thing that they watch on Facebook or YouTube, looking at the lives of others. And therefore they move away and they find the study of the kitab and the sunnah and the tafsir of the book of Allah and the shuruh and the explanations of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and learning their acts of worship, they find that to be too mundane for them. It doesn't give them the excitement. Because that's what shaitan will do. That's what shaitan will do. How many people will sit in a dars and study at the hawiyya or wasatiyya or tadmuriyya or kitab tawheed or usul thalatha or qawaid arba or usul sitta from the books of the scholars? And how many people will spend their nights and days just watching what's on the TV and YouTube and so on? So if this is what he said back in, you know, over 25 years ago, then the situation hasn't become easier. It's become worse because of the proliferation of news and immorality, what they call news, which is in many cases, you know, I was going to say in, in, a, in a small number of cases, I wouldn't say it's a small number. In fact, in most cases, it is propaganda indoctrination and fake in most cases because news media is after numbers and followers so whatever sells meaning sells the ads because most of it is free online whatever sells and brings in the views and brings in the clicks then they will publish it irregardless because if they have to pay any compensation the compensation is far less than the money that they've made So this, therefore, a person when he says, you know, when they say, well, how do I learn about what's happening in the world? Ask the people of knowledge, those who know. Sit in the duros. And if you do come across something, don't take it for granted. As has been the case over the last two or three years, that people have become almost like, you know, robots. That they're told to take a left, you take a left. You go, you go right, you go right. If you're told to dress a certain way, Wear a certain type of clothing. Close a certain type of establishment. Then everyone follows because they've been told that this is how you should behave. And they don't question. And they don't think. And they don't read the books of fiqh and the books of hadith. And the books of the salaf and the books of aqidah. That teach them how to behave in situations like this. Sheikh Jamal al-Harithi in his, in his footnote he makes a comment regarding the fact that this is the way of the Salafi and this is the Manhaj al-Salafi. So the Manhaj al-Salafi is that which Sheikh al-Fawzan has mentioned. That we do not make, you know, constant mention of what's happening in the press and what's happening on news media. That is the Manhaj al-Salafi. That the dua should proceed upon in order to forbid these wrongs Respond to them by refutation, meaning those who have knowledge and those who are able, those who have experience, then they are the ones. And don't tell me, Barakallahu Feekum, that Fulan and Fulan has knowledge and experience when he does not have knowledge of the Aqidah and Sunnah. So he's going to respond to the articles in the newspapers and in news media and the corruption, where, where, uh, whilst he himself has no knowledge of the creed. No knowledge of the belief, no knowledge of the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. then with what are you going to respond? Just with feelings and emotions? So the response must come from those who have knowledge and ilm. So yes, what the news, pe news media puts out is lies and corruption against Islam and against good morals. Then it should be responded to with ilm, with experience, with wisdom, by writing. Not by remaining silent. It must be responded to. But those who respond must, be, must have some firmness and steadfastness upon the kitab and the sunnah. They should not remain silent in the face of evil and sins and misguidance. And this protection of the religion by writing and refuting is from the aspect of protection and defense of the sharia from attack. And that is wajib. 
And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, this is not for everyone. It is not for the common folk who have no knowledge, insight or experience. So they start posting their thoughts and refutations on blogs and social media, as we find today. And what they end up doing is making more mistakes. And showing Muslims the path that is false and wrong in their response. Rather, this should be left to the mashayikh, to the scholars, and those grounded in knowledge from the students, from the tulab al-ilm. This is our approach to those who try to harm Islam and corrupt the people with falsehood in news media and social media and so on. This is the response. So don't engross yourselves, my brothers and sisters, with you know, watching too much of this stuff. You know, because they say, oh, well, we have an open free press. That's the problem. It's free. Free to attack. Free to lie. Free to deceive. Free to libel. Free to un attack the honor of others. Free to speak ill of the Muslims. Free to promote that which is corrupt and evil in society. This is the freedom that they give them. Meaning that there's no barrier. There is no restraint. Imagine that's what you're reading every single day. And this is what people have done over the last several years. And this is why, you know, they can come to you with ideas and ideologies and you just believe them because you don't think that they would lie to you. Yet they will stand on podiums and lie to you. You know, they will do that. And politicians in the West have done that. Whilst they're telling you to behave a certain way, they're doing something completely different behind closed doors and laughing at you. Laughing at you and mocking you for obeying the law. Whilst they themselves are doing the complete opposite behind closed doors. And it was a mockery. It was a mockery what has taken place over the last few years. But anyone who had his eyes open, then they would balance their affairs and take the middle path without causing chaos and without believing what these kuffar and these unbelievers and Western media is trying to feed you. So be careful, my brothers and sisters, that you don't get engrossed because it will become like whatever you see on the screen, I have to follow that robotically. So they are the ones who are programming you. Don't be programmed. If you want to be true, free in your soul and free in your heart, then it is the kitab and the sunnah that you need to refer back to. And that which the Quran and the sunnah guides you to. And alhamdulillah for those mashayikh and those students of knowledge who have spent the last two decades from the ulama and their students and their students and the du'at ilal haqq. They have spent the last 25 and more years in the modern era in guiding the Muslim ummah so that their eyes are opened up as, as to that which Sheikh bin Baz used to call the ideological attack against Islam. It is, it is an ideological attack. They don't, they don't just want you to change your behavior. They want to change every aspect of your belief and your conduct and your morality. That's why there are Muslims walking around today who think that there's nothing wrong with homosexual relationships or adultery or fornication. The next step that you're beginning to see now is this what they call minor attraction. You know, minor, attract, uh, minor attracted adults, as they call them. Pedophiles, basically. But they give it this name now, that they are adults now who can be attracted towards, you know, young children, five years old and six years old. And they say, well, this is how they were born. Just like they were born homosexual, they were born with, these, with this attraction towards children. So my request to you, my brothers and sisters, is that you strengthen your understanding of the kitab and the sunnah. Barakallahu feekum. Strengthen your understanding of the kitab and the sunnah and, and investigate what has been said by referring it back to the scholars, referring it back to the mashayikh, referring it back to those students of knowledge who have been active in the field of da'wah and speaking with the speech of Ahlul Ilm and the Salaf of this ummah for the last 25, 30 odd years. Because Alhamdulillah, our community is strong and it's growing. But it's not without 
you know, its faults or those people who are tried. We have people in our community who are tried. They are tried with these strange and false ideas. These ideas that are alien to Islam. Homosexuality is alien to Islam. Regardless of what the kuffar may say to you, oh, that's an intolerant view. No, homosexuality is not natural. It contradicts Islam. It contradicts nature. That which Allah has created human beings upon. So is adultery. It goes against the norms and morality and uprightness. This is someone else's wife. This is someone else's husband. By having illicit relationships, you are destroying homes and societies and communities. Yet the whole of the movie industry is sold upon this. Fornication and adultery and homosexuality. You know, I mean, the more of, of this type of immoral behavior, whether it be murder and killing and, you know, all these types of violent crime that is portrayed in news, in, 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 in movies and, and films and, and TV serials, the more of that you'll see mirrored in society. Is that not the case? The more violence there is in movies, the more violence there is in real life. The more violence there is in TV serials and soaps and so on, the more violence there is in real life. The more sexuality and fornication and adultery that you see there, the more you'll see in real life. Why? Because one is a mirror to the other. The whole purpose of these types of movies that they used to do in the war times, propaganda movies, they used to call them war propaganda movies. So people who are fighting for a certain country, they make movies about those soldiers their bravery and their courage and so on. What's the purpose of that? So more young people may look at those movies and join the army to go out and fight more. Like they did, you know, in the, in the, in the various wars that the West have engaged in over the last half a century or more, 70 years or more since the Second World War and even before the Second World War. Why? Why do they make these propaganda movies? Because they need recruits for those armies. These are, and they're actually called propaganda it, it is called propaganda movies or propaganda programming and films. So be careful, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves, that you are, that you use your intelligence, your aql that Allah has given you. You know, that which Allah has given you, use it. In light of the kitab and the sunnah, barakallahu feekum. And upon that, inshallah, we'll finish for today. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Jazakumullahu khairan.